Yo, what is up guys? It is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy back again today with another fantasy football video. Today's video is fantasy football draft tips. Tips to dominate your draft, tips to help you figure out what to do during the draft, and shit like that. But before I start the video, I'd like to ask you guys, could go down below and click that subscribe button, because like I said, I'm going to be helping you guys, give you, give you guys all these tips to dominate the draft, help you figure out what to do, and then I'm going to help you figure out what to do during the regular seasons by making correct waiver decisions, making correct trade decisions, making correct matchups, and all that, and then once you make the playoffs, which you're going to do because you're watching these videos, then I'm going to help you there make the correct decisions and to win your championship. So let's get in the video. The first tip is to do your research you would not go to an interview not knowing what job you're interviewing for so you shouldn't go to your fantasy draft not prepared know all the players that are in the draft because if you don't know who a guy is and you pick him, I don't know how you can even make the decision to pick him if you have no idea what he is. If he's a wide receiver, two on a team. Is he a wide receiver, three? You got to figure these things out. And a lot of rankings that you can find online, a lot of videos you can find online, even my videos, I talk about every single player and every single mock draft video I make. So you can use that to help prepare for your draft. And don't use a magazine also. That is the number one thing. Don't read a fucking magazine because if you're reading these magazines, they're so outdated. They don't know who's hurt. They don't know who's been traded. They don't know all these things because they're made in June. Your draft is in August or September. You need to make sure to use something that is up to date. So the second tip is to mock draft. You can figure out how trends, what type of trends are happening by doing this. Who's who's moving up the ADPs? Who's going down? Who the fuck is uh, getting talked up by some analyst and flying up the board? Stuff like that. Well, how has carry-on moved in the past couple of months? You can figure those things out. He's went from like a third-round pick to now a second-round pick. Stuff like that. How AJ Green has fallen. Get comfortable in your draft spot. This is the most important part about it because you can say you're picked 9 out of 10. You can do 100 of these on some of these websites and then be completely comfortable for you know when you're in the draft likely around a couple of guys who will be there that you like to take and it will make it a lot easier making decisions on draft day. Like I said, you can pivot easier because you know what players you like around where you pick. You can also try a bunch of different strategies. You can go with a wide receiver in the first two rounds, two running backs early, three running backs early, three wide receivers early, a quarterback early, an early tight end, or no wide receiver strategy, then no running back strategy. All those kind of strategies that I've made videos upon, you can try to do in these mock drafts to see how you like your team. If you don't end up liking your team, then you know not to do it during the real draft. So the third tip is to draft more running backs than wide receivers. I know it seems tempting to get a lot of these great wideouts. Now, this tip is useless if you're in a three wide receiver league. Even there, I still like to get more running backs, but I like to get a lot more wide receivers than those type of leagues. But it's far easier to find a good wide receiver on the waiver wire than it is to find a good running back. You can easily find a guy that you can just pick up off the waiver wire and throw into your slot. That's a wide, or not your slot, your flex spot. That's a wide receiver rather than some guy that you can find off the waiver wire that's a running back. The only time you're going to find a great running back really off the waiver wire is if someone gets hurt and it's the replacement or if it's something crazy like like Philip Lindsay or some guy that emerges late in the season to put or early in the season to put in to your running back position. The running back's values is a lot higher. So these guys, you could easily trade a lot of your running backs that you're drafting. If you went low on wide receiver, you get two great picks later that end up being something, trade them for a wide receiver. And now you got all that. The value, the running backs are going to go very fast. So you need to make sure you secure a bunch of great guys that you know you like and secure those golden ticket running backs later. Like I said, find a running back late that is a golden ticket because those kind of guys, guys like Burita that I like, Justin Jackson, could be your ticket to the Super Bowl. You can fucking punch that in and win your fantasy championship with those guys leading you there. So the fourth pick or the fourth uh, draft tip is don't go into this draft with a set strategy. Don't go in the draft thinking, hey, I'm going to go RB0. You could try it out in the mocks, like I said, but don't be like, okay, I'm going to go RB0. Because what happens if you're in the first round and six wide receivers go out of the 10 picks? Now the running back value is a lot higher. So it's very easy to uh, put yourself in a fucked up situation if you go with a set in strategy, like, oh, I'm going to go three wide receivers early, or I'm going to go three running backs early, or oh, I'm going to go tight end early. But what if the tight end that you want to go in the second round that that you thought you'd get Travis Kelsey, now you panic and you pick Kittle. It's just not worth it at that point. Like I say here, you will put yourself in a box and reach for that position you want and not for the value of a certain player that you could have gotten. So the fifth pick is wait on a quarterback unless there is great 
value. But before I read a lot more about this tip, go down below and click that like button. So, like I said, wait on a quarterback unless there is value. Quarterbacks are very, very deep. There's a lot of guys that are going to have top quarterback weeks. There's guys that aren't even going to be drafted. A guy like Foles could have top 10 weeks. A guy like Stafford is going to have top 10 weeks. All of that, and they don't even get drafted. Picking one early in the first few rounds lessens your depth at the skill positions, running back and wide receiver. And you know you're going to need a lot of running backs because the position is very volatile. A lot of running backs get hurt, and you're going to need these guys on your bench to play. And going with a quarterback so early really, in my opinion, hurts the way your team will look at the end of the draft and during the season. So at the sixth pick, it's also just like waiting on a quarterback, wait on a kicker and a defense. Drafting a kicker also hinders the depth that you can build early. If you swing on the in the on a defense like the Bears in the seventh round, your team, in my opinion, will look not as good as if you just completely avoided them and drafted a defense in the 15th round or the 16th round, 14th, 15th round, whatever your final two rounds are. Having an amazing defense doesn't mean they will always have great weeks. The defenses will play hard teams. The Bears week one play the Packers. Sure, they could probably score some points, but the Packers score a lot of points, so it's going to be hard for them to consistently have great weeks. It's a lot easier to just stream that position position every single week and switch in and out your kicker or switch in and out your defense. You can play matchups for kickers and defenses. So the seventh tip is to look at other teams around you while you're drafting. So it helps you really figure out what positions the other teams are looking at. So say you're pick nine and you see team 10. If it's a 10 team league, you see team 10 doesn't have a quarterback and they have two picks before you come back, right? So you know for a fact that they will likely go quarterback. So you should get the quarterback that you want before it comes back around. Stuff like that. Or say they have the, the first three rounds, they went three wide receivers. They're likely going to go running back. So if you want a running back, you're going to have to pick them there. It makes it easier to decide which position you'll pick because you can figure out who will fall back to you. Like I said, it's just pretty it's pretty easy to figure out. It's a simple thing to do, but a lot of people don't really do it. On some apps, it's a lot easier to figure out. You can on Yahoo, on the website, you can easily figure out and click and it'll tell you how many of each position uh, certain players have. So you will and I utilize that in a draft that is may or is probably already out by the time you're watching this. So go go watch that. At the 8th pick, you got to or the 8th uh, draft tip is to write down your team to know the buys and positions on your own team. You don't want to accidentally be the idiot that drafts two quarterbacks. If you're going for two quarterbacks, which I don't advise, unless it's a 14 team league or obviously a double quarterback league that have the same bye weeks. Because then what the fuck are you going to do week 7 when two of your guys are on a bye? That's just dumb. You can't do that. You should draft two different quarterbacks with two different buys. Pretty simple stuff, but something that some people forget. You also want to know that what positions you have to determine how much you will need that position. That's why I'm saying you got to write down the positions. If you've only drafted two running backs and you're sitting there in person and you're fucking looking at the board and you can't really determine and you can't really see it and you don't want to accidentally draft seven wide receivers. And you want to, it makes it way easier to follow in a live draft. This is a big tip for a live draft because online you can obviously see it on your screen. It also may be easier to write down because it may be bigger for you and easier to see. So, the ninth tip. We're almost at the end here, boys. I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. So, draft using tiers, not just a list. Pretty much what that means is there's going to be tiers at each position. Having each position in tiers and drafting based on that, not a top 300 list. So, at the quarterback, the number one tier is Mahomes by himself. And then the second tier could be like Rodgers, Luck, Watson, stuff like that. That's how you work with tiers. And so you can figure out how much better a certain guy is. Because if you're just looking at numbers, if you see Pat Mahomes is one and Watson is five, you're like, oh, I think that that's fine getting the fifth best guy. But in reality, Watson is, or, uh, ba uh, not, oh my jeez, Mahomes is so much better than those other guys. The same thing with the tight end position. Kelsey's in a tier by himself. And then there's the two other guys behind him in Kelsey and Ertz. And you might just think, oh, getting the third best tight end, Ertz, is ideal. But in reality, getting Kelsey is so much better. It's a lot easier to figure out when a position is depleting. Because you can see, oh, the second wide receiver tier is about to be gone. So let me draft one of those guys before it falls down a tier. Or the running backs are at the bottom of their fifth tier. Maybe I should snag one guy before I take a wide receiver that's already still in the fourth tier. And it makes it easier to draft based upon value because you always get the top value at each position you are drafting. So the tenth tip is try not to panic. This is the hardest tip to follow because if you 
it panicking is very easy. Someone takes the guy right before you that you wanted. It's it's happened to me before. I want Chris Carson. He gets picked right in front of me. I start screaming. I'm like motherfucker. You start punching shit. You know you're getting pissed the fuck off. And then you you realize that you make a wrong decision. What you need to do is stay locked in and not panic. You need to just make sure that you know a few guys you'd pick there. So say I want Chris Carson. He doesn't follow me. Okay. I want Josh Jacobs. He's the second best guy. If he gets taken, I want this other guy so that you can easily figure out what to do and you cannot panic. It will make you uh, less likely to have a straight panic attack. And so that was the final tip, but there's a bonus tip and that tip is to subscribe to the channel because you guys are getting all the videos to win your fucking league. I, re I release three videos a day. I don't go to sleep to do these things for you guys to fucking win. So, please click that subscribe button. It would really mean a lot. Click on one of the videos that's on your screen right now. I love all of you guys, and I hope you have a great goddamn rest of your day. Goodbye, boys.